Welcome to this edition of SKNAS Week in Review, a program highlighting the top stories of the work of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis for the past week. Here's a look at some of the highlights for the week of July 8th to 14th, 2022. Scores of children fine-tuned skills at General Sports Camp, St. Kitts and Nevis celebrates fifth year of Plastic Free July, and CFBC announces changes to 2023 academic school year. I am your presenter, Sherma Matthew. Scores of children spend July 11th to 15th learning a new sport or fine-tuning their skills in an existing one at the Department of Sports General Camp. During a brief opening ceremony held at the Warner Park Football Stadium to mark the start of the camp, Valencia Sider, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth and Sports, welcomed the participants and congratulated them on their enthusiasm for sports. Director of Sport Charles Morton gave an update on the return of the General Sports Camp and expressed pleasure to offer the outside experience to our children. I'm thrilled to resume our summer camp. This is the first in two years hiatus, so we are excited. We are happy to be back out to offer this camp to the young people of the country. Director Morton thanked the coaches for their commitment to ensuring that the camp is fun-filled and educational. He singled out Brittany Lawrence and Phoenicia Brown, two members of the female national football team, who were working with the girls during the football training. Mr. Morton also expressed appreciation to the Rams group of companies, the camp caterers and others who were ensuring that the camp's success was realized. Approximately 130 children aged between 7 to 14 years were engaged in basketball, football, cricket, volleyball, tennis, and golf. Students, teachers, and faculty of the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College, CFBC, will see changes for the 2022-2023 academic school year, which will officially commence on August 22nd. Dr. Moya Rotham, Vice President of the Academic and Student Affairs at CFBC, has more. Uh, one such change pertains to the dates related to student advisement and the start of teaching. And this would have been as a result of the delayed start of the CXC examinations. So we just want the public to be aware of changes because persons may be accustomed to the general operations taking place within a certain time frame. Um, college officially opens for academic year 2022-2023 semester one on the 22nd of August. We will be having divisional advisement sessions and registration for incoming and returning students from Monday the 22nd of August to September 2. As it relates to teaching, Dr. Rotham said that all divisions will not begin teaching at the same time for all students and this again is due to the delayed start of CXC. She noted that teaching will commence on Monday September 5th for all students both new and returning from the health services and teacher education divisions as well as for returning students in the divisions of TVEMS and ASGS. On September 12th, teaching will commence for new students in the division of TVEMS and ASGS. Vice President Rotham noted that the early application for entry into CFPC is still open and will close on Sunday, July 31st. All applications must be submitted online via cfbc.edu.kn. The fee for this period is EC $35. The late application period will run from August 1st to 31st and the fee is EC $85. Officials at the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College, CFBC, are calling on the general public to support the institution's uniform policy as it promotes a sense of belonging for students and creates a positive identity for the college community. We do understand what has been happening over the years and we are reaching out to the public 
as it relates to parents, uh, employees, persons out there in the public sphere, just to support the college in the enforcement of its uniform policy. All students are expected to wear the uniform as stated in our uniform policy and this will be shared with students. Uh, all students will be in, they are expected to be in full uniform as of the 20th of September 2022. Dr. Rotham noted that the wearing of uniforms is not just a matter of discipline and spoke to Frederick and Shanks 2022 who referenced the use of uniforms for students to, and I quote, fashion themselves into respectable and employable future adults, end of quote. She added that CFPC prides itself on this notion. In relation to new students, the Vice President said that they are expected to be properly attired at all times. You are expected to wear, for females and males, you are expected to wear a white school shirt along with a black or blue long jeans pants nothing that is distressed nothing that is cut or torn we expect you to present yourselves respectfully at the college uh, we are asking that parents and guardians support the college in its endeavors we would have been on your program before mr williams speaking about employability skills and this is just one aspect of it we can't go into the national bank any old way we can't go and report for duty at the defense force dressed any old way so we are just trying our best to ensure that our students when they leave the cfbc that this is just one aspect to help to mold them into the citizens that we know that they can be she said that school uniforms also contribute to the personal safety of students by allowing easier recognition of students inside the school and in the community. The St. Kitts Sustainable Destination Council SDC officially kicked off a month of activities for Plastic Free July with this year's theme inviting everyone to, and I quote, be part of the solution, help end plastic pollution, end of quote. This is St. Kate's and Nevis's fifth year of participation in the Plastic Free Initiative, which calls on millions of people globally to reduce their daily use of single plastic waste at home, work, school and supermarkets. Over 100 million people from 190 countries are participating in this year's challenge. The Plastic Free Movement aims to raise awareness of the harmful effects of single plastic use while motivating people to find sustainable alternatives to combat issues such as plastic pollution, which is steadily affecting our environment. As part of Plastic Free July in St. Kitts, the SDC will focus on a number of initiatives that appeal to citizens and residents to reduce single plastic use, including the unveiling of a billboard which encourages the purchase of water filtration devices geared towards limiting plastic pollution, Plastic free bag distribution at five supermarkets across the island. Be the Change Week aimed at offering daily alternatives to single plastic use. And Children's Green Tourism Camp, which teaches environmental stewardship. That was the SKNAS Week in Review for July 8th to 14th. I am Sherma Matthew. See you next week as we continue to update you, the general public, on what's happening in and around the Federation.